If you have been working with QML for some time without designer, you are already familiar with the workflow. Run the program, see how it looks. Okay, I made a mistake. I need to close it, fix my mistake, and reopen it again. Kinda slow. To say the least, it's a hassle, especially if you're working on a bigger project. Luckily, there is a better way, live loaders. Although not integrated, Qt offers us a way to reload actually without having to rerun the whole program. And trust me, it's gonna make your life easier. Okay, so the idea is to make our app reload every time a change has been saved in a QML file. The first thing we need to do is to create a class that will keep track of all our QML files and register a change if it happens. Let's call our class FileWatcher. Our class will inherit the QObject. Our main function will be setDirectory, which will take in path of our main directory. The addPaths function will add each individual QML file to our watcher. For this to work, we will need these three private members. QSystemWatcher will keep track of all files, QDIR will be our main directory, and the role of the timer will be just to make a short timeout in case we save twice in a short period of time. We will need two slots, one for file changes and one for directory changes. The reload signal will be triggered every time a file has been changed and we will trigger a reload when that happens. Let's rearrange the code a little bit. We are defining all our needed connections in our constructor and setting a timeout for our timer. Our timer will actually be the one to trigger our reload signal. So basically what we're doing here is getting all the QML files from the current directory and after that prepending the full path to that file. After that, we are checking if we even found any QML files. If we did, we are adding them to the watcher. So our current watcher will be watching those files. Next, we're getting all the directories that are in our current directory and going through each one, getting the full path of the directory, forming another directory, and then calling recursively our add paths function. What this will allow us is to check every subdirectory of the provided directory. Next, we need to fill out on file change and on directory change. Now this part of the code might seem a little strange, but there is a simple explanation. After a file is changed, it's not the same anymore and the file watcher will remove it from its watching list. So what we need to do is add it again. And the final part that we need is our main function set directory. We'll add a definition. What this will do is just start the process of adding all the files to our watcher. Okay, so what this part of the code does is checking if the directory even exists. If it doesn't, we are returning. And if it does, we're setting our directory to the provided directory and calling our function add paths that will add every QML path that is available in that directory. Okay, so our file watcher is done. Now the next part would be to change a little bit our engine. As you can see, we're using a QQML application engine and that is totally fine. We just need to upgrade it a little bit. So in my opinion, the simplest way would be to inherit the QQML application engine and make our custom class. Keep in mind that that is not the only way to do this. This is just, in my opinion, the easiest way. We're going to create our O engine and we're going to call it component engine. Things we need from our engine is simple. We need our file watcher and we need the QQML application engine because we are going to inherit it. Now, what we need to do here is just initialize our file watcher and connect our signal. Now what we need to do is initialize our file watcher and keep in mind I'm adding an if def here because we don't want that in our release version. The last thing is just calling our clear cache. This is just created so we can call it from our QML side. And this is it, as simple as that. Our custom engine is done. Now the only thing remaining is adding it here in our main. In our main file, we have to do also some changes. One of them is exposing our QML engine to the QML side. And we can do that simply by setting our context property. Now, as you can see, it's showing us an error. Don't worry about it. We're just missing an include. And we need to make a slight change to our URL. So what we're doing, is we're getting the main QML from our environment. But the issue is we didn't set anything in our environment. So what we need to do is just add the variable so that main QML has a meaning. Here we need to provide path for main. 
our live loader will still not work because we haven't done anything from the QML side. What we need to do from the QML side is to create a loader that is going to refresh its source after our reload UI signal has been triggered. So let's do that. In our main.qml, we will add a new window that is going to be our main window inside main QML. And let's put this inside our window. Here, what we are going to do is add a loader. We're going to add a function that is going to reload. Now, this might look a little bit strange. In order to refresh a window, we need to remove everything that exists. So we are setting the source to be an empty file. After that, we're clearing our cache and setting our source again. The only thing missing now is a connection that will trigger our reload. After this, everything should work. The main thing I've forgotten, and that is setting our directory. Number of QML files watched by our file watcher is free. One of them is main window, I hope. Now let's try it out. We have hello world. And after I add another D and click save, automatically reload it. We don't have to do anything. And that's it. In the next video, we'll be using our live loader to create our first component for our library. So stay tuned.